Shalom, shalom, dear brother, dear sister. It is well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The main question for today, that is this Bible study session, is why should we share the word of God? We'll also be answering some supplementary questions on who we should share the message with and some of the ways of sharing that message. So we're asking, why should we share the word of God? Who should we share the word of God with? And how can we share the word of God concerning salvation? This is concerning salvation. A pastor told us about an incident that happened when he was a young believer in college. He used to frequent an Indian restaurant where he ate biryani foods like rice with chicken biryani, such kind of foods. He had many friends among the waiters who were always happy to see him back. One night he dreamt that he was in heaven. He saw one of the waiters in hell calling out to him and asking him why he did not tell them about Jesus and salvation. Yet he was his friend. This young believer felt very bad when he woke up. After the dream, he decided to share the message of salvation with the waiters at the restaurant. He also resolved to use every opportunity God gave him to share this message with others. He didn't want to see any of his friends in hell because he didn't share the salvation message with them. This brings us to our answer to the question of why we should share the word of God with others. Part of the answer is from the book of Ezekiel. So we read in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 16 to 19. At the end of seven days, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman to the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word from my mouth and warn them from me. When I tell the wicked, you will surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man will die in his iniquity, but I will require his blood at your hand. Yet, if you warn the wicked, and he doesn't turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he will die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Here God is instructing Ezekiel to warn the children of Israel. E Ezekiel was told that if he didn't warn them, and they perish in their wickedness, God would hold him accountable for their condemnation. However, if he warned them but they refused to listen, Ezekiel would not be held accountable for their destruction. Secondly, Jesus instructed his disciples to go and make disciples in every nation. In Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20, we read, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. We also read in Ephesians 4.11, where we are given five full-time ministries in the church, what are called supposedly full-time ministries. We read, He gave some to be apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some shepherds and teachers. Shepherd is also another name for pastors. This is now the WEB version. You may say that this is for those who work in the church office. That may be true for apostles, prophets, pastors, and teachers. However, every believer is called to be a witness, and that means an evangelist. It doesn't mean you are to hold crusades. There are many other ways of sharing the gospel. I'll mention a few later. The greatest thing you can do for another human being is to lead them to salvation because that secures the, their eternity with Jesus Christ. Thirdly, why should we share the gospel of salvation? Jesus gave this warning in Luke 9.26 For whoever shall be ashamed of me and my words. The Son of Man shall be ashamed of him 
when he comes or when he shall come in his own and his father's glory and that of the holy angels. That is a modern King James Version. We should not be ashamed or give excuses when called upon by the Holy Spirit to share the word. Study the word of God daily to show yourself approved and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you as you share the word. We are told in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Give diligence to present yourself approved by God, a workman who doesn't need to be ashamed, properly handling the word of truth. So here is a summary of why we should share the word of God concerning salvation. First, God holds us accountable to share the message of salvation with those he brings our way. If we don't share with them and they perish, we'll answer for it. Secondly, Jesus wants us to be his witnesses to others. And thirdly, if we are ashamed to share the gospel, Jesus will also be ashamed of us before his father. Now we come to the second uh, supplementary question. Who can we share the word of God with? Just before Jesus was received into heaven, his final words to the disciples are recorded in Acts 1 verse 18. He says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the of the world or the earth. Jesus told the disciples to start in Jerusalem. So where is your Jerusalem? This would be your siblings and your parents. Then he said, from there they'd go to Judea, Samaria, and then to the uttermost or the outermost parts of the world. Here's a way to map this out. These are the people you can share with. The first category is your Jerusalem. This would be your relatives and friends. Second category is Judea, your Judea. These are your fellow employees at work and your neighbors. And thirdly, the uttermost parts of the earth or the outermost parts of the world. These are strangers. Yes, you can minister to strangers as well, but you'll see how you can do it. So, now the third question is how do we share the message of salvation or how do we share the word of God concerning salvation? Yet, most of us are not trained to do so or are not good at speaking. Others are shy and so on. God has given each of us a measure of grace and the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit will always give us the right words to share with those he brings our way. We read in Ephesians 4 verse 7, but to each one of us was a grace given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And in verse 16, from whom all the body being fitted and knit together through that, that which every joint supplies, according to the working in measure of each individual part, makes the body increase to the building up of itself in love. That means we each of us has a, a gift or a grace given so that we may function and do our part in the body of Christ. In 1 Peter 4.11, we, we read the following, If anyone speaks, let it be as the words of God. If anyone ministers or serves, let him do it as of the ability which God gives, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ, to whom is the glory and the might forever and ever. So we are not to compare ourselves with others. Yes, others may appear gifted in a particular way, but we may not. So we are to do with what God has given us the grace to do. As you share with your Jerusalem and Judea, that is your relatives, friends, fellow employees and neighbors, there are two very important things to know. First, you should study and meditate on the word daily to know it for yourself. You should also try to internalize it. Secondly, your character is very important. This group of people know you very well. If your character is defective or contrary to what you tell them, it will be very difficult for them to listen to what you tell them. Your fruit should be congruent 
to your words. Yes, it will not contradict what you are telling them. Remember the old saying that some people preach water and they take wine? The Apostle Paul calls us written epistles. We are the only scripture some people will ever read and you should draw them to Jesus Christ. There are a number of ways you, you can share the word of God concerning salvation. Number one, you can use opportunities that you get when you meet them to contextualize God's word in what you are speaking about. Use relevant portions of scripture to answer to some of the issues affecting them and our society at large. Secondly, when they share problems affecting them, use the word of God as a standard of advice. Thirdly, get materials from your church and elsewhere regarding salvation and share with them. Fourthly, invite them to Bible study sessions and also share the materials you get during your Bible study. You can also invite them to your church, not just when there are conferences. Number five, be a good, reliable friend to them. People don't care how much you know, but they want to know how much you care. If they know how much you care for them, they will listen to you. For the third category of people, that is the strangers and those beyond your reach, you can partner with others with wider ministries by supporting their work financially or in other ways that God may give you. I believe that in case you are not sharing the message of salvation before, you now have good reasons to share. Shalom, shalom, my brother and my sister. God be with you till next time. Amen. Dear friend, would you like to invite Jesus into your life? You can say with me this prayer. It's based from Romans 10, verse 9 to 10, and other verses. Say this. Let's say it together. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are the Son of the true living God. I believe that you died on the cross to save me. I believe that you rose from the dead and went to be with the Father in heaven. And I welcome you into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. If you've said that prayer with me, look for a Bible-believing church that is near you. And may God bless you. You can also reach us at the Facebook page, which is there at the bottom of this page. May God lead you in his paths, in his ways. May God preserve you until the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to take us to be with him forever and ever. Amen. Amen.